All right, we're out here with Josh doing a 8,000 8, square footer. So this, you know, everyone thinks this job's like, like super complex yeah. and exciting, but it's actually me just following him around with a tablet, <laughs> listing like wobbly fans and stuff. <laughs> on a good house. On a good on house. On a good house. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit more intense. Yeah. So, all right. So we're going to knock out this 8,000 square foot property and I'll list anything exciting and uh, show you what we find. All right. Let's go check it out. So this, this roof is a massive roof. So what you always want to make sure you do is just take your time and really look around uh, the, the roof structure don't just get a few things and call out a roofer really take your time and, and just look at everything you possibly can and maybe even walk it twice because Something like this you can easily pass it up if you don't take your time Okay, whenever you got one of these uh, turrets here and you start to walk around Oh look you know ADD kicking in first all these staples get a bunch of staples up here, but um you can see that they have a lot of like previous repair and tar around the turret here. Look, come around the corner here too as well. So you have a lot of angles on this roof. And uh, uh, this could be a sign that they're having some previous water leaks or water damage around here. So you just wanna look further evaluate whenever you're inside the property whenever you start to see stuff like this. Are they just preventing water from getting in there or did they have a water leak and that's what they used to repair it? So just something to think about whenever you're inspecting. Always think about the big picture. Also, if you can see down here, uh, the plumbing stacks are currently capped. So you always wanna make sure that these are uncapped. It's a common builder mistake where they forget to uncap them. They are supposed to look like this. This helps the plumbing freely flow through your property with the air. Ladder safety. Yeah. I'm, I'm, calling your, I'm calling your supervisor. I got short legs, can't <laughs> lift it up no, right now. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm calling the boss, calling Mary. Oh, dude. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> you go ahead and turn in my tools. <laughs> All right, so what Josh is doing here is after what we like to do is do a close pass and now he's doing the wide pass to kind of observe the whole property together to make sure it's shedding water and anything that you missed up close, you can kind of find out far too as well. So this pass is really important and uh, try not to skip it. All right, one really nice thing about this property is uh, it has really nice grading and drainage so all the water is uh, flowing away from the structure uh, walking over here just some minor things uh, with the outside condensers but whenever you're inspecting them or you're trying to figure out if they're working or not a good thing to do is kind of just feel if the air coming off the top is uh, warm or cool I know you're not gonna be able to really see it in the video but this condenser is blowing a little bit warmer air and then this one is completely cool so you're gonna come into, uh, you're gonna start to think, hey, this condenser might be underperforming and uh, make a mental note of that. And you can start to add up the full story whenever you get your deltas or see what the uh, coils look like in the attic space. So right now it appears that the uh, upstairs unit appears to be underperforming and we just make a mental note of it and kind of move on. We don't make a, a full opinion until we look at the full system. Another thing too is pretty common, you have some leaks around the pool equipment and I have to say we see this pretty much every day. Alright, uh, let me uh, go catch up with Josh. What's up everyone? If you know this, we teach SOP in legal and ethics and we have a class coming up in this March. March, right Josh? I believe so. Yeah, March. At the end of March. So if you want to sign up, go to homeiw.com and uh, you can find the class and sign up. So, uh, yeah, follow us along, take the class, get your stuff, all, all your Texas certifications in order. And if you're out of state, it doesn't work too well. This is a Texas only class. So, SOP, legal and ethics, come in, sit with us with eight hours, and we'll review and get you your credit hours. 
what Josh is doing here is he noticed that there was some buzzing in the panel, so we whipped out the infrared camera just to see if there's any overheating breakers. Um, and uh, he didn't find anything, which is which is always which is always a win. So this is me just hanging out, chilling, watching Josh working it's like, hard. It's a, it's a nice wicker chair you're sitting in. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, this is kind of the format of what it looks like whenever we're writing up a property here. Okay, we haven't had much rain, but this is another way that we try to ensure that that turret up there is not leaking. Is uh, We use the infrared camera and we uh, scan the walls where we saw that previous repairs. Not really seeing anything, uh, but again, it hasn't rained. So this is the best that we can do without tearing a hole through the, uh, the sheetrock. Right here, what we like to do with all our tile showers, especially upstairs, is use our shower pan tester. You can find these shower pan testers on showerpantester.com. My dad sells them. And uh, you can kind of see here that what this does is allows you to walk away with the shower, let it fill up with a little bit of water to make sure that the shower pan's watertight and it's not causing any water damage below the shower. One thing I always recommend is when you're walking through an attic space, just take your time. You don't want to be that inspector that goes through the roof, but also you can spot small things like this. Like, well, why is there a water stain there? And then look up and see what you can find. It could be anything. So we also, it looks like it may have came from the HVAC system at one point in time. So we'll further investigate it. Water in the pan. Looks like the, um, on the high efficiency furnace, the drain connection is leaking into the pan. You got a big rust stain and some water. All right. One other thing you'll notice if you ever have a foam insulated attic, which is not showing up very well in the camera, but we have a foam insulated attic, is that your interior walls and your attic floor space does not need to be insulated. You actually don't want to insulate it so you can have proper air movement throughout your attic space because if you encapsulate your attic space you can actually cause uh, moisture issues and uh, um, temperature control issues inside your attic space which can lead to uh, numerous problems such as mold and reduced life expectancy of uh, your roof. All right so one thing in the attic, we always look around as much as possible. I peered around this purlin support. I saw this is the primary drain pan drain line, and it's uh, fallen off that blocking down there at the bottom, so it goes up to the second blocking. So it's not properly sloped. So we'll ask that they uh, reslope that and get it back on the blocking and secure it in place. And uh, and that comment is part of our comment package, uh, which you can purchase on the HIW website. Okay, uh, bad news everyone, I am running out of SD card. Last time my camera died two times and this time I'm running out of SD card. So I'm gonna come better prepared for the next vlog. Uh, so overall, this is a pretty good property. I mean, it's pretty big, so you're always gonna find something. Just uh, a little bit of HVAC issues and the biggest one was the roof finds. Those, that can be the most pricey items on a property like this. So, um, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and follow us for the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.